All right, YouTube, uh, this is my two-part video review of my iMac six months after I bought it. Uh, this is part one, looking at the hardware, and part two, we'll look at the software that came in the box. Let's start off by looking at the specs. Um, my iMac cost me £949 when I bought it. It was the higher end of the two 20 inch models. Uh, the screen is at 1680 by 1050 resolution. And I've got a 2.4 gigahertz Core 2 Duo processor. Uh, one gigabyte of DDR2 RAM. Uh, ATI Radeon HD 2600 Pro. Um, as I've said before, the 2600 Pro is actually an underclocked 2600 XT. 8-speed uh, super drive, and I've got the wired keyboard and Mighty Mouse came with it. Um, so let's just have a look quickly at the ports. Uh, there's the Mini DVI Firewire 800 and Firewire 400 ports, which I haven't used. Um, the Gigabit Ethernet, uh, Again, I haven't used it because I've been using the wireless that's been built in. Uh, stereo and optical line in, line out. Uh, at present, I've got my speakers plugged in with a stereo jack. Um, the actual ports do support multi-channel optical surround sound output uh, using what I believe is a mini Toslink cable, um, which I think is really helpful. Uh, I will be making use of it at some point, but at the moment, uh, still using the same old speakers I've had for about six years uh, and there's three USB 2 ports now the USB 2 ports are really not enough I don't think I mean there's three of them and what you find if you've got a wired keyboard like I have um, you've got one port automatically taken up by that all the time now I know the mouse plugs into the keyboard um, which is really great and, and certainly helpful um, but then I've got an external hard drive which I use, which is permanently plugged into the second of the three ports. So leaves me with one port that gets used basically um, for whatever I need to use it for. So I'll plug in my ITV, I'll, I'll plug in my iPod for charging into that. Um, so there's a lot of swapping goes on. Uh, I think it does actually kind of push you towards needing to buy a uh, form of USB hub. Uh, I haven't actually got around to doing that yet, um, I will do because I have quite a few USB devices but actually six months of just changing on one of the ports which I actually have an extender cable um, so I can actually just plug things in at the front um, it's actually not as frustrating as it could be, I mean it is irritating you know naturally, it's just nice to be able to leave everything plugged in but in all fairness um, it's not it's not a deal breaker, let's put it like that. Uh, so I've got the iSight camera and microphone that built into the iMac. Now, I've been impressed with the quality of these, um, without any question. All my videos which I've done for YouTube have been recorded using both the iSight and the built-in microphone. Uh, I think the quality has actually been pretty good. It has certainly surprised me. Um, but, as I say, I mean, I'm happy using it and maybe at some point I will buy a uh, slightly better external microphone but certainly what comes in the box is very good. Um, now the super drive it's a 8 speed DVD burner uh, it does dual layer as well um, I've not actually used dual layer I just used single layer discs uh, in fact there's um, what I'm using at the minute and they all seem to work just fine. Uh, before that I was using PC line uh, DVDs which are basically uh, PC World's own brand, um, which I can't seem to buy anymore, but you know, Verbatim is one of the best. And um, I have heard that some people have had problems with slightly picky optical drives, but mine just seems to work really good. Um, I've not had any burn errors, uh, so can't really complain about that. Now, the screen, now, this is a big one because at the time that I was looking at buying my iMac, there was a huge debate over whether. You know, you should get the 24 inch to the 20 inch because a lot of people are saying, oh, the 20 inch screen's cheap, it's not good, it doesn't look good, you know, and all this stuff. Um, I personally 
never really bought into that. Uh, if you put a 20 inch and a 24 inch screen side by side, yes, you will see the 24 inch screen does look really good and probably more vibrant than the 20 inch screen. But when you actually take the 20 inch screen on its own merits, um, it's very hard to see any problems with it. It's a really nice screen. It's based on twisted pneumatic technology as opposed to in plane switching like the 24 inches. So what you find in practical terms is that your viewing angles on a 20 inch screen um, without loss of colour definition are not quite as wide. You know, you, you need to sit more channeled into where you are. Uh, in practical terms, I mean, I don't tend to sit sort of to the side of my computer looking at it at some strange angles. So I've never really seen a problem with it. Um, I watch a lot of films and TV shows and stuff like that on my bed uh, behind me. And again, uh, I can't see any problem with it. The 20 inch screen is absolutely gorgeous. It's very vibrant and punchy. Uh, colors are crisp. But what I would say is what I did when I first got the iMac was I actually changed the gamma to 2.2 using the color settings. And what that did, uh, the original color palette to me looked a little washed out. Not massively, just a little washed out. So I changed the gamma and I was just blown away. It just looked really good. Um, so yeah, whatever a lot of people say about the screen, it's entirely subjective. If you're a graphics designer and you want to work with the glossy screen on the iMac, then yeah, buy a 24 inch. But for everyday use, the 20 inch is absolutely glorious without any question on that one either. Uh, looks and design, it just looks like a gorgeous machine. You put it on a desk and it just commands presence. Um, and it still does, you know, six months down the line. Um, I haven't, I just can't find anything wrong with the actual look of the machine. Um, gaming performance is something else. Now, a lot of people say, oh, it's an iMac, it's not really a game system. Well, true, depending on what you want to play. Uh, I play Counter-Strike Source, Half-Life 2, Guild Wars and all that. I run them at native resolution of the screen without any problems. Um, in fact, I get nearly 100 frames a second, so I can't really complain. And that's with settings on medium and high. Uh, have a look at my iMac gaming performance videos and my CSS stress test just to see basically what it's capable of. Um, but yeah, I still I play games on it very happily and it works really well. But I've not really uh, tried playing something like Crisis, which I know does cause problems for a lot of systems. Um, so there you go. Now, overall, I have to say I've been very happy with the hardware. The spec is brilliant. You know, six months ago it just blew me away. Now it just chomps through everything I throw at it without without really any effort. Um, yeah, it's not the mother of all gaming systems, I think is a fair comment. You know, it's not going to play all your latest games at like, you know, uh, 2,000 pixels wide and stuff like that at full resolution. But if, like me, you're a fairly light gamer and you're quite happy playing, you know, games from about a year or so ago, uh, or just, you know, to turn the settings down, it will handle it quite admirably. Um, so yeah, six months on, the hardware's great, it's got plenty of power still there. Um, and I've found that actually whatever I do doesn't really eat up all the processing power, so there's plenty of leg room left in this system. Um, so there you go, uh, that's basically my review of how it's been for the last six months and the practicalities. Uh, head on over to my website www.progy.co.uk where there is a full written review of this um, and don't forget to check out my next video on the software. Alright, thanks.